All right, so now let's see that how we can integrate our incident list view model and call get all incidents to display all the incidents. I'm going to go to the incident list page. And in this page, you can see that we have a function called populate all incidents, but that function is completely blank. There is nothing going on. So what we want to do is right over here in this function, we want to go ahead and get all the incidents. But before we do that, let's go ahead and remove all of these extra stuff that is not being used. So make sure that all you remove all of these so that you're not importing any of these files that are not really useful or not being used. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create an instance of the incident list view model, the view model that controls this particular screen. And that is easy to do because we just created the incident list view model. Make sure that you import it. So I can do a quick fix and I can import it. The other thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that we have some place to put the incidents. So I'm going to go ahead and put a list of incidents. We may need that, we may not need that, but we're just creating a list of incidents. That's perfectly fine. Now that we have incident list view model, we can call the incident list view model dot get all incidents. So incident list view model dot get all incidents. And since this is an async function, we can wait for it. We are going to do a wait. We will get all the incidents. This is a local variable incidents. And we will finally assign these incidents to underscore incidents inside the set state. So set state, and we can say incidents, which is a private field, and we will assign these incidents to it. Now, when you assign these incidents, what's going to happen is that since this is inside the set state, it is going to render the screen again. It's going to fire the build function again. And if you go down at the bottom of the build function, Right now, we're not really doing anything. We're not displaying anything. You can see over here, our child is simply a text which displays nothing. But we already have a list control or a widget that we created. If you open up the widgets, you can see right here that we have created a incident list widget. And if you open this up, you can see a lot of code. And in order to display the incidents, we can use the incident list widget. But before you use that, you do have to make a little bit of change to it. And the change is that we have to make sure that in order to call the incident list widget, whose purpose is just to display the incidents, you better pass in a list of incident view model. All right. And we will also make sure that the only way for you to use the incident list, you have to pass in the incident list view model. Now you might be wondering, okay, why did we even create the incident list widget? I mean, it was already part of the starter project, but why? Why can't we just use the incident list page and display the list right here? And you can, you definitely can. The reason that we created incident list widget is that we want the displaying functionality of all the incident in one particular control. So that if there is some other page who is saying that, hey, I want to display the incident list also, they can simply pass in the incidents and they're good to go. If I would have added the whole code for displaying the incident inside the incident list page, this particular page, then I will have to copy paste, which is not a good idea. Okay, so now that we have that, I can go and add some control over here that will allow me to add the incidents. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and say the child will be depending on what kind of a child we want to display. If the list of incidents is greater than zero, then we know that we have incidents and I can go ahead and use incident list control and I can pass in the incidents, which is underscore incidents. Else if, well, if there are no inc incidents, then I can use empty or no items control and with a message which can say 
no incidents found. This particular control, which is the empty or no items control, is also added right over here and is part of the starter project. Let's go ahead and save it. And right now it's actually saying no incident found. Um, so we have to make sure that we are, we do have some incidents. I think we did, but let's go ahead and 100% make sure that we do have incidents. Let's go ahead and refresh this. Okay, so we do have incident right over here. You can see the incident is there, the pothole, which we added yesterday. So now we have to make sure that why exactly is this not displaying? So let's go ahead and make sure everything is firing. We have this over here. We get all the incidents. So let's go ahead and debug it and see that what exactly is going on. All right, so this all looks good. I think the problem might be inside the incident list widget, which is responsible for displaying the incident. And you can immediately see the problem right over here. The image network, the text for the title, the text for the description, they're just past nothing, no. So we need to fix this stuff. So inside the item builder, what we want to do is we will get the incident, which will come from the incident, incidents with the index. Once we have the incident, we can simply pass in the incident.photo URL. To get the photo. So I'm just going to say incident.photo URL. And for the title, I believe we will simply pass in the incident.title over here. So incident.title. And then over here, we will, I guess we will pass in the date for this one. So we'll say incident.incident .incident date. And for the last one is the incident description, incident.description. Let's go ahead and do a reset. And now let's see that why is it not. Oh, there we go again, item count. So all of these things you will have to fix. You see that item count? That shouldn't be there. It should be based on the incidents. So I will say incidents.length. And immediately you can start seeing our potholes. Congratulations, we were able to display the incidents. This is really, really good, right? And let's go ahead and do one thing. Go ahead and add a new incident and see if that gets displayed or not. So I'm going to go ahead and say add a new photo, select from a photo library. Uh, traffic signal is fine. Traffic signal down. Signal down on road or some other description. Submit. And when you submit, it goes away, but it doesn't really display over here. So we need to find out why is this happening. So once we add an incident, we want to refresh this particular view. So if you go to the incident list page, you can see right over here, we go to, or we perform a navigation to the add incidents page and we get the incident added. Now, once we get the incident added, we don't really do anything from there. So over here, we can actually add something. We can say, if the incident is added, then what do you want to do? Populate all the incidents again. There we go. Let's go ahead and refresh it. So right now we have two incidents. Let's go ahead and remove the incidents and see what happens so that we can start from the beginning. I'm going to go ahead and remove it. I'm going to just delete the whole collection of incidents. Let's go ahead and refresh it. No incident found, so that's working fine. Let's add a new incident. And we will select pothole. And I'm just going to say over here pothole because there's a pothole. And I will again say pothole on the road. Pothole on road. And then submit. And now you can see the pothole actually being added. So once we get the incident added, we were able to populate or refresh the view. So that is perfectly fine. That's working great. The next thing that we want to do is that based on the user login, and I'm actually still logged in, based on the user login, I should be able to go to my incidents and should be able to view all the different incidents that I have submitted.
So let's go ahead and work on that in the next lecture.